Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Give him a computer and he'll rob you blind. Fishing, as described by Wikipedia, is a way of attempting to acquire information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details by masquerading as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. So this is how it works. First you check your email and you get an email from your bank, usually telling you that you have an urgent message. So you go to log in to read your message using the link that was conveniently provided in the email by your bank. So you assume you're going off to your bank site to uh, read this message when actually you've been directed to a phony bank site. You don't even realize it. The way this works is they create a exact replica of the login page of your uh, bank. So you go on to that, looks just like your bank, you don't think nothing of it. You go ahead and type in your username and your password. And get your password in. Okay, and then you go click the login button and oh a glitch all right it didn't go through so you type your pass your username in again there you go and then okay your password but wait hold on now if you put your password in this time it is going to take you into your bank and you'll be there you'll be able to go check your messages and all that but we've been kind of trained to follow glitch you know to accept glitches you know first in phones there was the drop phone calls like okay the phone call drop go ahead and uh, just recall you know when in early days of the internet oh drop carrier uh, redial back in and reconnect um, same thing you know connecting to websites and stuff like that it's like oh it didn't go through so you try again the second time it goes through we're conditioned and used to that and hackers know that and they want don't want you to be alerted that you just gave them their password your username and password you go ahead and do that you go back into your site you go to your messages and all and you know that it's everything's normal you are actually in your bank site because what happened here is they actually um, redirected you after you put in your information they redirected you to your actual bank site wanting you to think it was just a little glitch and go in there so you wouldn't go in and change your password this gives them time to do what they got to do So what happens next? Well, if you're like most people, you go on and you check your messages and there'll probably be several statement alerts from months past that you haven't seen. Most people really don't look at their statement alerts on their online banking. They either get paper banking or they keep track through their online banking and really don't need to do a monthly reconciliation. It's kind of a changing with the technology. But at any rate, this justifies that you come, came here from the email message for the hacker, and that's all they want is that you're going to come in there and you're going to be like, oh, it's just a statement alert. Okay, it's not really that big of an emergency. So you don't think nothing of it. And either A, go in and uh, clear out all the statement alerts and vow to you know keep up on your uh, bank messages a little bit more diligently, or you uh, ignore the statement alerts, just leave it be and vow to ignore any messages coming from your bank. Now the hacker, on the other hand, the hacker is busy. The hacker is looking you up on Facebook first. And the best way to get a, they want to get close to you. They want to be friends with you. And probably the best way for them to be friends with you and to get close to you would be through online games. Um, not the games are bad or nothing like that. Nobody's hacking you through these games. These games I've, I've shown here are very reputable games. But um, these games also require other people to play. Some of them require neighbors and you collect neighbors. And, you know, some people, you know, in, in the need for neighbors will friend just about anybody, including a hacker, not even knowingly. Now, the hacker's next challenge is to get into your bank system they got to get through a system that banks use to monitor which computers use to access your account what bank does is normally you access your account probably from the same computer or same couple of computers and when you or suppose another person say another ha a hacker 
goes to access your account using your username, the bank first says, oh, hey, wait, no, that's not the same computer you use all the time. Okay, I want to ask you a couple of challenge questions. These are questions you set up when you first set up your bank account or your online banking that it asks that only you should know. Now, the hacker has been on Facebook already and has gotten a number of these answers already for a majority of people. Reason being is these challenge questions most people use are very, very simple and obvious. And it's information that you can find right on Facebook just by friending you. The most common challenge questions that are used are your mother's maiden name. All right, now the hacker gets into your Facebook, you're friends with your mother. It's very common practice for uh, people to, um, especially women, to use their maiden name along with their married name. So you'll see that many times. Hacker's got the maiden name. Your birthday. Go on Facebook. Most people have their, their birthday up there. Your first school. A little bit of tracking, a little bit of digging. Sometimes it's not that hard, you know, for a hacker. If you have your uh, the school that you graduated from, quite a few people, you know, all they got to do is follow through the school district and find that school. There you go. They got that information. Your pet's name. It's probably all over your Facebook account. Your first car. It may. Some people may have it up on their Facebook account. Might be a little more challenging for a uh, hacker to get this information from some people, but it's possible. You know, a number of people probably have that up there. And uh, this is, you know, information that can possibly, you know, be gathered through Facebook, making it possible for the hacker to now get through your challenge questions because these are pretty easy questions for them to answer. So this is what you can do. Many banks offer a two-page login. You want to try to avoid the first page login because that puts your username and password on one page makes it an easier target for hackers and especially in phishing attacks um, most banks offer what they have on the first page is you put in your username and then that'll take you to a second page now on that second page it'll display an image and a phrase that you put in there when you set up your account that only you know is there because the uh, hackers you know have not been past the first page they can't possibly you know fish they'd have to do like a specific after you they can't go after a whole group of people with the second page it wouldn't be worth their while so that's something you want to look for in your bank and on that second page that's where you put your password in you don't put your password in until you see your personal image and your phrase that is a great way of preventing phishing attacks don't use easy or obvious challenge questions um, especially you don't want to use things you know you want to think about you know make sure people can't get the information for your challenge questions that's a very strong line of defense to keep you know a hacker if they do possibly get you in a phishing at least you know to try to authenticate onto another computer they might they could be stopped at the challenge questions if you use something a little tougher that you know only you would know if you receive an email from your bank don't use the link to access from your bank instead log in from your usual link or bookmark that the way that you usually log into it and go to your message center from there if you see so much as a simple glitch while you're logging into your bank change your password immediately that's you know you change it immediately there's not much they can do the, the hacker once they when they initially get the password they do need a little bit of time to gather information before they can still access so you have time they're not going to get right at it and it's also a good idea on a regular basis say once a month to uh, change your password up a little bit you change you know change it you know I, I know it's a real pain in the ass for, for a lot of people to remember but you know you come up with variations of your password it makes it harder for uh, hackers to you know single you out and target you and of course report any suspicious activity to your bank immediately when it happens hackers are becoming more and more sophisticated all the time but they still rely on the basic uh, elements to pull off the things that they do such as you know they rely on a common lack of knowledge, you know, that people generally 
have of how they do and what they do and it generally comes down to trickery most of what they do and getting to know their tricks will help you to avoid falling into their traps and you'll be on your way to being a smarter surfer.